Real talk. It's been 33 days that I have been off of social media. This is a new personal record, so I'm really grateful to share my reflections and document this process. And what sparked my deletion of the apps from my personal phone was a leader, teacher, and mentor that truly inspires me and struck a chord through her teachings. And as soon as this light bulb went off for me and the missing puzzle piece was identified, it was truly liberating to, in that moment when it connected for me, just to delete everything. And going cold turkey without, you know, a big announcement that I was going offline was liberating. It demonstrated to me that I have the power and autonomy, and so does everyone else, to choose what we do with our sacred time here. With this time I had back into my daily routines, I found myself discovering new possibilities, diving into the depths of new opportunities that presented themselves now that I have the awareness to receive them. Now, prior to this 33-day digital detox from social, I was already extremely aware of my habits. I had my screen time tracker. I would be extremely conscious and aware as to how and when I was using these platforms for what purpose and intention. And it's so interesting to see this relationship with social media continue to evolve. And one of the most beautiful things about it, now that I've taken all of these steps back and I can look at it with a clear mind, is the community and those connections. However, the things that would really strike a chord with me in a not so positive way would be the ads that would appear based on things that I've said out loud that my phone happened to record and then tailor to me. In addition to the FOMO culture, I very much feel this interconnectedness with everyone and everything. So being offline, I've been able to, in those moments where I feel this desire to connect with community, to just send loving energy to all of our communities around the globe in every time and space and really just feel that love around and inside of us. Now, one of the lessons from nature that continues to inspire me is that networks of plants and trees have this interconnected root system and they'll send nutrients to each other in times of need. Now I love to embrace this energetically and I choose to implement that when I do go back online in a social capacity. And one of the things that's inspiring me to go back is the timing of (laughs) these universal events where we have a very special transit tomorrow which will bring us into a new state of flow and rhythm with the lunar cycles in addition to next week being the date for the third annual digital wellness day and I know that I'm recording this ahead of time so I'm dating this and the intention is for it to be evergreen but I wanted to emphasize that in this time and space everything is significant and everything always is and I trust that everything happens in its divine timing and space and I hope to look back to this recording and remember the empowerment that I gave myself from having this 33-day digital detox from social media And it's really cool. And yes, I did have FOMO. I had, 
moments where people would send me links specifically to a social media post and I would have to communicate to them that I no longer have that app and thank you for thinking of me, what exactly was the message? And some of them were cute animal videos and others were inside jokes that I still don't quite understand, Um, but that's okay. And that's a part of the learning to find this new flow. So that being said, I want to honor the growth over the years of Digital Wellness Day specifically as it's something that I was very deeply involved with since the beginning. And the fact that we can use this awareness of these digital tools to use them in ways to flourish. And I'm embracing the persona of a digital flourishing fairy where I can flow in and out of these platforms in ways that foster ease and sincere connection. And that's something that continues to inspire me. So when I do go back onto the platforms, I have a plan to use a second phone that I've saved. I have an an iPhone 8 that's not connected to service, but it has Wi-Fi. So that will limit my availability to only use it when I'm connected to Wi-Fi. And I'm inviting myself to only pick it up when I have a specific intention to do something purposeful in that digital capacity. So I think that by having this second device, I'll be able to have clearer boundaries with these tools. And I understand that that's a gift and a privilege that not everyone has. So I'm really grateful that I was able to save this secondary digital device for a meaningful purpose like this. And something else that's unique to my routines but I feel called to speak to is that sometimes I will even play a Tibetan tone singing bowl and use it to charge my intentions, to have that loving vibrational frequency flow through to mainly help ground me, but have that ritual of presence throughout everything that I do. Sometimes that ritual is expanded to having dried herbs burn for a smoke clearing ceremony. And sometimes it's connecting to the earth. So sitting on my grounding mat, putting my digital device on the earth and connecting in these deeper ways. So these are just some little things that help me get centered and really get grounded and clear on my intention for what I'm doing. Now, I want to honor that it has been challenging and I've noticed the other ways I've used my digital tools as a vice. For example, periodically checking my email knowing that nothing is coming in. So having that awareness that although I might not have had my social media apps on my phone, in moments of silence or in between tasks or craving of a mental escape, I would still reach to this digital device for something. So in those moments, tuning into that level of awareness that Yes, I'm in this lull moment and I went to pick up my digital device. What is my body, ego, mind trying to tell me? And how is this moment here to teach me and what can I learn from it? So having this lens of curiosity and compassion for ourselves will help us to identify what's really happening under the surface. Now, I've listened to a variety of audiobooks, so I don't know exactly which one I'm referencing currently in this moment, but there was one very wise author that was referencing how our human behavior has always had distraction embedded within it all. So understanding with compassion for ourselves that it is our human innate behavior to be distracted. So honoring that and then choosing to pause and realign and reconnect. Now this has been something that has been happening forever. So it will continue to happen and we will continue to strengthen our muscles through this practice. So I'm really grateful that I have this Real Talk podcast so I can authentically share what has been happening and why I went ghost on 
social for no apparent written reason, but I feel this this connection and calling for something bigger and grander and in these past 33 days I've been able to tune into that frequency and really practice what I've been craving and preaching (laughs) so for all of the years as a digital wellness advocate I'm grateful that I can continue to deepen my practice and identify new opportunities for growth and along the way this past month I've had people give me very mixed reactions to not having the social media on my phone and not accessing it regularly and you know you do you whatever like it's it's very interesting so taking all of that feedback with a grain of salt and trusting that we are all on our own unique paths here and I I'm so appreciative of the moments that we do cross paths and that we can share nuggets of wisdom with one another and hopefully continue to enlighten the path for the digital natives to come. And that's what really, really just fuels me to keep sharing this and growing because one example that just really triggered me and I was driving alone, so I couldn't really tell anyone this. It was the first time I'm saying this out loud, but I'm driving locally in my neighborhood, and there's this young man, very, like a boy, but a, a young person, no gender identifying, doesn't matter, but a, a young individual was crossing the street on a cell phone and was not looking and I see cars approaching him in both ways and I it still just just frustrates me and and not so much frustration but also like concern like I have genuine concern that there are young digital natives walking aimlessly looking at their digital devices and unaware of their surroundings Not to mention the people that have AirPods in or whatever it might be that are literally tuning out their surroundings. So it is something that really ignites this passion in me to speak up as a digital native that is awake and can see all of the distraction and hoopla that is masking the reality of our physical environments. Speaking of our physical environment, Earth Day passed and that was something that really I wanted to post about but I chose to deepen my personal practice on that special day. And our environment is something that is interconnected between us all. We are all roommates on this home planet Earth. So how can we have that awareness to tune in to our physical planet and use these digital tools from this place of awareness to connect and enhance and grow together. So in the spirit of growth and collaboration and awareness, I invite us all to learn from the experiences of digital detoxing and how to use these tools for good. And I haven't fully set out a plan for myself and I think the most important thing is to be agile to have lean boundaries that are ebb and flow with the circumstances so having our digital devices with us but perhaps it's tucked away in a drawer for deep work or it's on silent or do not disturb or there's designated times where we do use certain platforms so it it is very interesting and something that will need to continue to evolve to meet our growing needs as community. So all that being said, I am inviting myself to continue to flow through this sense of compassion and be extremely optimistic for how we can continue to identify opportunities for us to connect in meaningful, substantial ways. So I hope this inspires you to connect with your 
physical environments, with your physical space, with your physical body and being. That's another thing that really has come to a clear space in my mind of using digital tools, especially working in a digital environment, the impacts on our physical body when (laughs) our space might not be the most ergonomic or it might be very ergonomic and we just keep inching (laughs) towards the screen, which leads to tech neck and low back pain and carpal tunnel. And there's just so many things uh, from the blue light emissions on our eyes, our eye health, our mental health. There's so many factors that go into this. So I really am optimistic that this digital wellness day for the third year in a row will continue to educate and inspire people to use these digital tools to foster flourishing and I know that was a bit of a rant but that's part of the reason why I love this real talk with me podcast because it's real talk and I'm genuinely so passionate about all of these topics and that has really been what has fueled me the past years to keep going and growing together and speaking up to share this awareness and continue to open my mind to what I don't know. So in the spirit of infinite possibilities, I trust that our collective purpose here will continue to prosper and grow along with us. I appreciate your awareness and support as I honor the past 33 days of being off of social media and I look forward to continuing to grow together and expand beyond our comfort zones blessings 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 thank you thank you thank you lots of love and infinite light namaste